Thank you for that amazing introduction. Before I begin, I want to share with you all that this is my very first TEDx event as a speaker and I am elated. So when I first got the invitation to speak at this TEDx youth event, I was like, wow, they must have really run out of options. But then I realized that this was my chance to speak about something I'm extremely serious about, happiness. I'm 15 years old and I recently cleared my grade 10 exams and took up humanities as my study stream. These two major life events of any 15 year old in India have left me amazed by the sheer reactions of people. I'll tell you how and why. So when I first got my result, everyone around me was like, how much did you score? How much did you get? But no one asked me if I was happy or content with my result. I scored 91% and I was extremely happy. Probably happier than the one who got 99% and could not score 100%. I'll explain this in the context of the recently concluded Olympics. Did you know that there is actually a research that backs the fact that bronze medalists actually may be happier than silver medalists? Because the most likely alternative for bronze medalists is getting nothing at all, whereas for silver medalists it's winning gold. Coming back to how happy I am with my dream stream humanities, when I took up humanities as my stream, everyone around me asked why with a very big question mark. No one asked me if I was happy with my result or confident with my choice. And this fueled my quest to define success as happiness and took me to Bhutan, the only country in the world that actually defines success as happiness. Interesting, right? How on earth can they manage to measure happiness? Before I answer that, by a show of hands, I want to know how many of you know about gross domestic product? Uh, cool, quite a few. Uh, now tell me how many of you know about gross national happiness? No problem. Um, don't worry, by the end of this talk, I assure you that you would have Googled GNH at least once by tomorrow. Let's start off with GDP, gross domestic product, which sounds impressive but is really just a way of saying how much stuff we've made in a year, right? So it's like caring only about the number of Instagram followers you have rather than you know your actual friends. Because let's face it, a million followers on Instagram won't help you trying to get through a tough day at school. And then there's GNH, Gross National Happiness, which measures how actually happy we are with life. I mean, you could have all the money in the world and still feel like a lost puppy, right? Just ask my mamaji who recently splashed out on his new Mercedes on these Achmer highways, that too during the rains, only to find out that our roads are more like obstacle courses than highways. His car is still in therapy, yeah, I mean the service station, recovering from multiple bruises. Digging more into GDP, it's the total value of all the goods and services produced and sold in a country in a year. It's basically the nation's report card, but instead of grades, we get a number with way too many zeros. And just like in school, higher the number, the more the people think, wow, we're doing great. Even if deep down they're like, I have no idea what this number means, but it must be good because it's big. But here's the catch. GDP doesn't care if you're happy. It doesn't care if you're stressed out, overworked, or if you've cried over the price of avocados this week. <coughs> as long as you're buying stuff, GDP is happy, which is ironic because GDP doesn't even count for feelings. So explaining this at the nation's level, imagine a country with a boom in GDP. But the people here are exhausted, they're tired, overworked, stressed out, and missing out on family time and surviving on coffee. So one day they mustered up the courage to go up to the government and tell them, boss, we're tired, can we take a break? And the government was like, why? I mean, we are making so much money. And the people replied, yeah, but we'd like to spend it, please. So the reality is that more money can't buy more happiness, but it can buy more ice cream and that's kind of the same thing. It's like that old saying, right? Money can't buy happiness. But the people in this country were too busy working to actually eat it. So let's talk about GNH, GDP's cooler and more laid-back cousin. 
GNN stands for Gross National Happiness and it measures how content we are with life, how happy we are with life, how satisfied we are with life. It's measured in Bhutan, a small country nestled between us, India, and China, up in the Himalayas, where they've figured out something crucial. More money can't buy more happiness, but it can buy more ramen, and that's kind of the same thing too. And there, they've learned how to eat that ramen before it got too cold. In Bhutan, you might actually come across a world where people are encouraged to take it slow, slow down, take a break, and actually go for an afternoon nap once in a while. And I would definitely want to live in a world where napping is a sign of success. So I interned in Bhutan for three weeks and researched on their gross national happiness. And much to the dismay of my parents ended up increasing mine a little too much. So if you ever met GNH and GDP as real people, GDP would be that overly competitive friend who's always like, I ran five kilometers this morning, made four big business deals, and had salad for lunch. Boom. But basically that one friend who makes you feel exhausted just by listening to their two done list. Meanwhile, GNH would be in the corner, chilling with a cup of boba tea, saying, I went to work, took a nap, read a book, and I feel pretty good about it. Because GNH is never in a hurry. And GNH definitely cares for its comfort and happiness more than salad for lunch. So GNH is basically someone who understands the law of diminishing marginal utility really well. This law states that even if you're consuming your favorite pizza continuously for five days, the satisfaction derived from it would fall and you would start seeing pizza as that one crush who never responds. Explaining it better, GDP is zindagi na milegi dubara, is overworked Hrithik Roshan and GNH is the happy with life for Anaktar. But here's the reality. And listen to this carefully, I don't want your parents coming after me for being the Pied Piper of happiness who drove you all away from working hard. We actually need both GDP and GNH. It's not a battle of GDP versus GNH. We need GDP to keep the economy running, to build schools and hospitals and to compel Taylor Swift to come perform in India. But we also need GNH to remind us that life isn't just about the hard cash. Explaining it with an example again, um, suppose GDP buys a cake, but GNH gets to decide if it's chocolate or sweet potatoes. Yes, that flavor exists. So GDP is about making sure that the bakery stays open, whereas GNH is about making sure you enjoy every bite of that cake. And while doing this comparative study, I came up with two conclusions for myself, which I'm going to share with you. First, changing that saying, you can't have the cake and eat it too, to I'd rather have that chocolate cake and eat it too, because I have to try the GNH bakery. And second, GDP and GNH are like vada and pav. Sure, you can eat them separately like I do, but together they are a match made in heaven. This implies that GDP plus GNH is equal to a life that's not just successful, but also freaking awesome. That's the real goal, folks. Thank you. This is Prerna Solanki signing off. May your personal GDP be high and your GNH even higher. Thank you.